Good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, Dennis O'Connor, I'm uh, the chair of the Community Foundation of Surrey. Thank you for all the name checks. It was great, um, Chris. Um, I'm, I'm, I've got limited time, so I'm going to crack on because Tim is watching me and he's got an evil eye. Um, so uh, here we go. Um, that, that's, that's the organisation. I'll say a bit about it in a, mo in a moment. I've got three hard questions given to me today, and they're tough questions. The importance of working closely with the community and the voluntary sector, say something about that. I, I, I just want to take us back, not because I was there at the time, although you might think so, but when Beveridge um, you know, framed the welfare state as we know it, he had a dilemma, and I think we need to overcome his dilemma this time round when we reframe what we're doing now. The value of the third sector with any relevant experience, and it was really great to hear them pumped in the, in the movie. Thank you, uh, Rachel. Um, I think the reach and range of the voluntary sector are a huge potential added advantage um, if you properly incorporate them in the system. Um, and how important is, the, is, is it to work with communities and local people rather than, as it were, doing things to them? Well, here's the thing. Charities can only survive and succeed if they do it through thousands of volunteers, donors, and connections they make, they have to work with others. That's their raison d'etre, so they have to be good at it. And I think that's going to matter hugely if we're interested in health as opposed to sickness. Um, so, let's press on. Okay, this is us, the Community Foundation for Surrey. Becky, and my chief executive, is in the audience, um, and watching me get closely. Um, how do, we, how do we do what we do? Well, um, been around since 2005. Um, we raise money from philanthropists, and uh, that can include Surrey County Council, by the way, as I'll mention in a minute, um, and we get match funding. And what that does is it gives you a huge boost in the funding. If you put £400 into our winter poverty programme, because we have match funding, that'll turn into 800 gift aid it, now your 400 is worth 1,000. So you, you know, now you're starting to feel an effect. We've got 89 funds, about 17, over 17 million in endowments. That allows us to do grants, do about £2 million a year, distributed across the wonderful charities in Surrey to help people. OK? Um, so now you get the flavour. That means we bump into a lot of charities and voluntary sector on the way, and then everybody else who surrounds them. Um, I see some people in the audience I recognise in that regard. Right. The, right. the importance of getting the voluntary sector contribution is really important. And I, I, I want to emphasise that particular contribution they make. Now, Beveridge, as you know, uh, framed, framed the, the welfare state, uh, including health. He did that in the early 40s, but then... He became more and more concerned and ambivalent about where it was going because he thought, I've framed all these professional services, but I've kind of left a gap in relation to people and communities. And his insight at that point in time, and this happens about 1946, and he releases this report, Voluntary Action for Social Advance, he releases it in 1948, saying, effectively, if we don't focus on people, their relationships, and the connections around them in their community, we are going to miss out terribly here. That, that was his dilemma, but the, unfortunately for him, the political boat had already sailed. We can still influence Tim right now. Um, so, um, and here's the thing, his insight was right, because here we are, 75 years later, for those of you who may not recognize the good life, this is a Harvard study that's been running since 1938 with some people from Harvard, including JFK, in, in the mix, and some people from the inner city. And what they found is this, and this is echoed by six other major studies across time. People are well. They have a good life. They're more likely to be healthy if they're more connected to family, friends, and the community they live in. It makes them better. Um, and the thing I think charities can do is they can make a huge contribution to that connection and those relationships because they have to recognise them to operate. That's the key point. So this time, let's not leave it out 
or do it as a last <coughs> resort. Let's put it right in the heart of what we're thinking uh, to make the, our networks and our connections much stronger. That's the basic idea. Right. Reach, I could go on at great length, but if you were, if you were able to pass the eyesight test, which would make you an astronaut, because I can't really blow it up properly here, you would see th this is the fun, this is the charities we funded during um, uh, the coronavirus epidemic, and they stretch from ash here, just in this little short slip, all the way across to Farnham uh, and, so, and Epsom and so on. They, they went all across the county. It was over 300 grants that helped to make life better. We were able to do it well because we've got match funding, sorry, County Council and others. Um, but what it showed above all is the reach into towns and villages even into rural areas. Reach is really important if you're after health. Um, and range, you, we, we all have a kind of view of the voluntary sector, but look at the range there and in primary beneficiaries from everything from learning disabilities to kids to people living in poverty, domestic abuse, the things that, that Chris was so movingly telling us about. So reach and range, strong. And here... I just want to take you into what I think is a very exciting thing, if prevention is your thing. And we did highlight prevention. Um, so this is a bunch of, of kids with uh, uh, special needs and education plans. And this is a couple of weeks ago, remember that chilly bit? Here they are wandering into the wilds. Uh, it's cold, um, but they're going to do coppicing, Okay, some woodwork, but most of all they're going to do, make little fires. I say little fires, don't get alarmed. Okay, they love that bit. Um, why these kids? They're from a school in East Surrey, because they've got those plans, we know they're much more likely to suffer anxiety and other issues. And so what's, what's going on here is a bunch of volunteers are taking them from a charity and they're evaluating their participation, their little journals, that, that those are the... Uh, the colour bits, uh, colour books on the side. How was this possible? This was possible because of matched funding and establishing a mental health fund in 2021, seeing the, the scores of application for grants we were getting we couldn't fund. We went, got three philanthropists and families to put up a million, and Surrey County Council, and I must acknowledge this, put up a million beside that. These grants, though, this time, are not just for the next 10 minutes. They're not for one year. They win a five-year granting program to do things like this with vulnerable players who are more likely to suffer from mental health, and we're going to evaluate it as we go and learn as we go. Um, that, I think, if you put that together, the donors, the volunteers at play that day, the charity... The, um, the school, connecting with the right school and the right people to get the kids there, you begin to see the force multiplier that I think is really important. To Now that we have a general sense of direction, Rachel and Tim, the next bit, the how, how do we integrate those connections and relationships? Because I don't see those words featuring perhaps as much as they might, although Sam Hutchison, to be fair did underpin that. I acknowledge that. Um, so, challenges in redesign for me are this, trying to look at it from um, our role in, in supporting charities is, I think conceptual, there's always been the thing about charities are different and now, you know, do they have the same status? We, I, it was really great that the film underpinned that idea that we just got to kind of learn and make our contribution to making everybody better. Um, I think that we have to be very clear. Are we seeking a new cap capability for health, which I think we are? Or are we m more, more about strengthening the system we've got to prevent you know, collapse and difficulties? Because that will make, mean a much different participation by voluntary agencies. If it's for a new build, that's a different gig. The second for me was organisationally, they are fragile financially, especially now because of all the things you know that are going on. Some are resilient enough to work on programmes and they can be identified. Some offer reactive comfort 
and, and shelter uh, sort of services, but some can go long term and do big things. And they're evidence based, by the way, because that's often the thing said about them. And they're used to confidentiality. OK, they can manage it. Um, so what range of volunteer, I think, let's get specific in the how. What range of voluntary support helps, especially in health inequality areas? Sam, there's pictures there of the Hive. The Hive is a hub where a lot of connections and relationships can be made for the old and the young. Imagine having one as vibrant as that in our health inequality areas. A point of connection, not just to do a bit of thing, just have a cup of tea, but a lot more. Third one for me, and this is one for a nice one for Tim, really, forging a viable, agreed framework, I think it's a big, big job. It's a good job, he's positive, isn't it? Uh, it I think it would assist, I, I ask, I wonder this, whether actually what the charities offer, would it help if we quantify that in some broad way, back of the envelope? Just let me give you one example. The Surrey Care Trust, they calculate that in a year, they do 39,700 hours, which even if you put it at minimum wage level, right, that gets you over 400,000 pounds, not to mention all the volunteers and connections. Imagine that across Surrey. You've got thousands of volunteers. You've got a big force. Let's use that force well. Let's aim for health this time. Let's cure beverages dilemma for once and for all to the team who've got the lucky job of putting it all together. Well done, Rachel and, and, and colleagues. Thank you very much.